Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Kidlet Joy, and welcome to the third episode of The Reading Diaries. I did miss a couple of weeks because it's just been a little bit hectic. It's a perfect time to sort of just go through what I've been reading both in the classroom but also at home. So we're going to start off with a couple of texts that we've been using in the classroom as mentor texts. Before I do, we have been continuing our poetry reading and we are continuing our Wild Robot read. Uh, last week was a bit hectic, we didn't get as far through The Wild Robot as I would like, so I think we're sitting around chapter 25, 26 at the moment, so we've still got a fair way to go. So this week we're going to be reading through some more chapters because we need to get a little bit further along. But the class are really enjoying The Wild Robot. I think there is enough pitched at that level, but also enough that extends them because there's a lot of, oh, what does that word mean? Or what is that? And it's helping us to have some really good conversations around uh, new words, which is my favorite thing to do. We've spent a lot of time recently talking about making connections, both text to self, text to world, text to text, and we have been reading a variety of books to suit that, including Don't Let the Pigeon Stay Up Late by Mo Willems, which is just a classic and is a really fun read about a pigeon who doesn't want to go to sleep. And of course, this is a really fantastic persuasive text. And in fact, I think we read this when we were talking about persuasive texts. We we're talking about all the different authors' purposes behind books. This book always makes kids laugh. It is funny and you can't help but read it with enthusiasm and joy because The Pigeon is just a delightful character. We also read Market Day by Callie Galash, which was a shortlisted book last year. It is one of my favorite picture books and it is about a young girl and her family who go to a market. The young girl is given a coin to spend at the market, but she doesn't know what to spend it on. There are so many amazing things and she spends the entire day trying to decide. And it's not till the family are leaving at the end of a long day. They've had some dinner there. There's been music and dancing that she knows what to do with her coin. And it is a beautiful story about thoughtfulness, about a love for markets and for the amazing people who sell things at markets. Like it's just a really glorious read and the color palette in it is just stunning. So I'll leave the CBCA review that featured this book on the screen so you can check it out if you haven't seen it already. We also read What Do You Do to Celebrate by Ashley Barton. This one is all about different celebrations around the world and each page features one child and their celebration. It doesn't tell us where on those double page spreads, but at the end of the book, we get to we get to go through a list of where all of these children are from and what the celebrations are. This one does mostly feature Christmas celebrations, but different Christmas celebrations around the world. And there are other celebrations included as well. So there were lots of things that kids could connect to. It also invites a lot of close reading and close looking at the text and inferencing because it never outrightly states exactly what the holiday is. You kind of have to make an inference on that before you check the back of the book. All right, then moving into some other kids titles that I have been reading over the last little while, including picture books, middle fiction, and young adult titles. The next two books are books that I bought for my niece, particularly for my for my mum to have at her place. My mum's family is, all family background is Italian. So we've been trying to hunt down some books. I'm trying to find a good book that talks about a Nonna, but I um, haven't been able to find a good one yet. So if you have any recommendations, leave them down below. But I did find these two. So there is my first 100 words in Italian, which is great. This is super simple. It's really bright and colorful. The only thing I'll have to do in here is go through and um, change mom to mum because it was written by an American. So I'll just go through and I'll make sure we have our Australian spelling in here. That's okay because it's our family book. We can do what we want with it. The other one that I really loved was Familiar. Uh, and this one is Italian and English words for family. I'm gonna to have to do the same thing in this book, but it's really simple. It's just the English word and the Italian word for the different people in all the different members of families. And it is just so cute and bright and colorful. And I know my mom is gonna really enjoy having these there because I, I think I talked about it last year. I did find some Persian books or Persian slash English books for my brother-in-law's family, but now we have some Italian ones. My mum does also have some other Italian books from when we were children, but some new ones for Miller are coming her way. I also found two more books about Ramadan and I have promised my class that I'll bring in some books because we have quite a few students whose family celebrate Ramadan. I've got two more books to add to the collection. The first one is Tell Me More About Ramadan. This one is by Bashar Karoum and it was a really lovely story of Layla who is wanting to learn more about Ramadan and explaining the purpose behind Ramadan and why they fast. And similarly, there is Little Lena Learns About Ramadan. Again, in the same vein, just a slightly different story. This one is slightly less wordy than Tell Me More About Ramadan, but both of them have really gorgeous illustrations and a really lovely message and narrative through them. So these will be added to my collection. I do have another video all about other books that I found last year for Ramadan. We'll have a little box for a little while so that kids can find them really easily. Then there are a couple of picture books that I just found randomly that I had 
in my collection but I have not actually read so I decided I should uh, get on that. The first one is Bedtime Sorted by Jimmy Reese and this one is a funny story about a dad who's trying to put his kids to bed. Jimmy Reese is an Australian comedian, he's really funny and he also has three young children including a set of twins like the dad in the story and dad thinks he's so successful at putting the kids to bed until they keep getting up <laughs> and not going to sleep. So it is a really fun, very cute story. This one I will probably gift to my sister and to Miller so that they have a bedtime story when Miller is going through this stage. There is The Biscuit Maker by Sue Lawson. This is about a very busy neighborhood where the neighbors don't really know one another until suddenly these amazing biscuits begin appearing and people love them until the biscuits stop and then they begin to wonder, well, where did they come from and why have they stopped? And it turns out that one of the elderly neighbors has been making these biscuits as a way of trying to build community, but he falls ill and it comes down to one of the young children who realizes what has happened and checks in on him. So it's a very lovely story. And then there is The Two-Hearted Numbat by Amberlin and Ezekiel Cray-Molina. This is a First Nations story about a numbat who has two hearts. One is his heart of feather, which is light and playful, and the other is the heart of stone, which is fearsome and brave. And the number feels that there is this disconnect between him and that he needs to just have one heart and so he goes to seek some advice and is sent on a journey where he discovers that actually having the two hearts is an absolute bonus because it means that the number approaches situations from multiple perspectives and knows when to apply both the, his heart of feather and his heart of stone and that actually it's the two of them combined that make up his heart. It's really really lovely and the illustrations are so gorgeous. The final picture book that I am going to talk about is I Am Me, a book about authenticity by Susan Verde and Peter H. Reynolds. This is a really great book about being yourself. I am trying to collect some more of the books in this series. There's a whole stack of them. And this book is all about embracing yourself and your style and your personality and recognizing that you are you, you matter, and that what you bring to every interaction, to every situation is valid and important and you don't need to change yourself to fit in. So I absolutely loved this book. It was so gorgeous and fun. And then we move into some middle fiction and young adult titles. So I finally, finally read the first book in the Polly and Buster series by Sally Rippon. This is The Wayward Witch and the Feelings Monster. I recently talked about this on my other channel. Polly is a witch, she's in magic school, she's in year five, and she's terrible at spell making because she doesn't know that this is what it is, but she's dyslexic. The letters swim on the page and she struggles to really concentrate on what is actually being asked of her to do and so her spells always go awry. Her best friend is a, is a buster, he is a monster that lives next door and in this world witches and monsters are not supposed to get along, aren't supposed to be friends and so their friendship is frowned upon by just about everyone. While she's trying to fit in Polly unintentionally begins to behave badly towards Buster and being a feelings monster, Buster's outward, outward appearance represents what he's feeling so when he's happy and joyful he's big and light and when he is sad, he is small and gray. This is about them navigating that friendship, about Polly realizing what true friendship is and that Buster has always stood by her. And it also navigates prejudice in a lot of ways. Great dyslexia and some neurodivergent representation in here. I'm definitely looking forward to continuing this series very soon. I also read Our Home is Dirt by Sea, Australian Poems for Australian Kids. This is a collection that has been selected by Diane Bates. It is a wonderful little collection of Australian poetry for kids following a bunch of different categories from mostly me or an about me section, families, people, animals, sports, school, and special times. They're short, they're fun, they're funny, and highly entertaining. And the last book that I'll talk about is Everything Under the Moon. This is a collection of fairy tales in a queer light. This is edited by Michael Earp and illustrated by Kit Fox. This is a collection of queer reimaginings or retellings of fairy tales or folk tales. I've also spoken about this recently on my other channel. I didn't necessarily love every story in here, but I did enjoy a lot of them and I thought they were really well done. It's a great collection. If you are looking for fairy tales for a young adult audience that do explore and represent a variety of queer experiences, lived queer experiences, this is a great collection. It does play on a lot of traditional fairy tales, but also a lot of other folk tales as well. And I can highly recommend the Gary Lonsborough, Lily Wilkinson, Helena Fox, and Alison Evans stories as some of my favorites from in here. So that is the end of my reading diaries for the last couple of weeks. I'm sorry that it was, it's was it been so long, but hopefully the variety of texts in here made up for it. In the comments, I'd love to know what recent children's titles you have been reading and enjoying. Feel free to let me know down below. Otherwise, feel free to leave 
an emoji that you believe represents you down below. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.